Hello, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be delving into another excellently written SCP file, along with the help of a friend of mine. If you enjoy, please like and subscribe. And also, beware. Here we go. Item 6202 Level 2 Restricted Containment Class Euclid Disruption Class Flam Risk Class Caution Special Containment Procedures SCP-6202 is currently inhabiting an abandoned townhouse, which has been bought off, concealed from the public, under the cover story of an unfinished transformation of the building into a museum. Walls leading to the exterior have been covered in two centimeter thick polyethylene high density fiber with five centimeter thick panels of the same material covering all doors and windows. Drainage and ventilation systems have been sealed as well. A sterilization chamber has been installed at the entrance of the building with an air purification system installed outside. Ingress is currently restricted with the exception of the cleaning crew in charge. All personnel entering the building must wear full hazardous materials protective equipment. Extreme care must be put in to not make direct contact with any SCP-6202 specimen. All personnel must be quarantined and tested for contaminants, regardless of contact, for a period of no less than 16 hours following egress. Infected personnel will have their compromised organs removed and returned to the townhouse. If this cannot be accomplished without them dying, the infected will be returned to the townhouse in full. Only if heavy resistance is shown can the subjects be terminated. The remains left inside the building. Description SCP-6202 is the collective designation of 617 pieces of furniture contained within an abandoned townhouse in Port Taligre, Portugal. The appearance of most furniture is reminiscent of traditional 17th century decor, with almost all the pieces presenting moderate to heavy decay. All instances of SCP-6202 are fully composed of human tissue, despite being visually indistinguishable from their normal counterpart, specifically hardened epithelial layer mimicking. Inside this layer is an assortment of organs and tissue that varies in each instance. While nearly identical to human organs in structure, they seem to lack function, missing their connective tissue, vessels, and nerves. These structures can still be present in some, but serve no apparent function. Although these instances are biological in nature, they don't appear to be able to metabolize energy, with all cells composing them appearing in a state of stasis. Despite the state of SCP-6202, instances constantly generate a thin layer of tissue, majorly composed of an epidermis, adipose tissue, nerve fibers, and arachnoid matter. This matter spreads through the pores on the epithelial layer of each instance. This generates cobweb-like structures that cover both SCP-6202 instances and the area around them. These structures require bi-weekly removal as their spread will fully cover the building within a month. Any person coming into contact with any SCP-6202 instances or, or any of the tissue they generate will be infected their cells multiplying due to unknown triggers generating cancerous growths that soon begin to phagocyte previous cells. This process lasts anywhere from five days to two weeks, with the victim's body morphing into a new SCP-6202 instance. Total removal of the infected tissue will stop this process. Once the new SCP-6202 instance is generated, it will begin moving towards other instances the movement generates skin flakes and can cause further infection. All SCP-6202 instances react negatively to any attempt at removing them from the building, grouping together and producing tissue at a much faster rate. 
Any damage caused to them quickly regenerates through unknown methods. The cobweb-like tissues they secrete does not possess this ability. Discovery SCP-6202 came into Foundation custody in 1992 after the Academia Scientifica de Anomalio merged into it. The anomaly in turn was obtained from the Institut Nacional de Scientes Paranormias, a precursor of the Academia, active during the Second Portuguese Republic between 1926 and 1968. No information seems to exist about the building before 1946, despite its architecture and decay indicating it was built sometime during the 1910s. Research obtained by the Instituto Nacional de Ciencias Paranormias was lost upon its disbandment, leading to the infection and loss of 18 people upon initial contact. All previous knowledge regarding the anomaly comes from several written entries found etched into an SCP-6202 instance in the shape of a journal in 1971. Test subjects began arriving this morning, most of farmers and pastors, although we've met with writers and politicians as well. Most of them are fame-lick, malodorant, covered in bruises. Laura tried to offer them some water, but was stopped by the armed men accompanying them. When we were told there were anomalous subjects willing to be studied, we expected that this would be the case. I thought I'd be better prepared, but I'm not. I'm afraid of whether I'll ever be. We must start work soon. Members of the PVDE will come in two days to take away those who do not possess anomalous traits. They won't tell me where, and honestly, I prefer it that way. I don't know what the end plan is here, but I fear this is but the beginning. Most of the people here speak Uskera. I don't understand it, but I've heard it before. The soldiers, meanwhile, speak proper Spanish and work under the Caudillo himself, which means we work under him too. It begs the question, are we bending our knee to the Spaniards? We've all heard the rumours of his planned invasion, of his unified Iberia, of his meetings with the Chancellor, as Germany bombards Paris. Yet none of us thought there was any weight to it. It appears we were wrong. We've never advanced so much in terms of investigating the paranormal. Even if only a small percentage of the people brought to us can make use of that which lies beyond normality, it's much more than what we'd worked with before. What I'd worked with, at the very least. Just today an old man arrived, capable of bending flesh at will. He's been taken from Vizcaya alongside the rest of his people. They were brought in by a different group of people this time, Soldiers who seemed better prepared for the anomalous. They told us that this old man was the spiritual leader of his group, and that we should be careful. They refused to elaborate further. Always a good sign. His name is Erisenten. At least, that's what they call him. I believe it's some sort of title. The man speaks of freedom for the destitute, of a future where the Roma and the Basque and the people of Catalonia and Andalusia would have a place in the world they could call home. Everyone's begun listening to him as if he was the second coming of the Redeemer. <laughs> I'm starting to understand why the guards aren't too fond of him. I don't get it. We've dealt with carnomancers before, but Erisenton is different. His cell division. It's not a virus, a mutation, a prion, a thaumaturgy. His powers just are, and we don't have the equipment to prove or disprove otherwise. He says it's a blessing, a gift from the fake gods he prays to. We've been warned that this is the kind of talk he'd give and the kind of talk we should ignore, but I cannot help but wonder if there's some weight to it. He does exude the aura of a prophet and the words he and the rest speak. I need to get more sleep. Maybe I'll ask for a soundproof room to stay in. A chance of Erisenten's followers starting to get to me. Today we learnt that Erisenten can breathe back through deceased. A group was fusillated yesterday, moments after which the old man walked past the guards. They tried to stop him, but were shoved aside with a single flick of the wrist. Veins and nerves shot out towards the limp bodies. In minutes, they were walking again, as if nothing had occurred. This was not an act of necromancy. This is something else entirely. I've started to notice there are less guards on duty as of late. I've asked around, and all I receive are empty stares. Are they preparing for something? Laura and two others left for Lisbon. I don't blame them. I'd do the same if this wasn't the place I was raised in. 
It seems the PVDE is falling apart at the seams too. Today we had about half the guard of last time. Franco's men have taken on the guarding duty, but it has only made the man more wary. Vines made of sinew and fat entwining like licorice now travel under the carpeted floor. Sitting doors and windows were needed. Most people have sided with the old man by now and have begun digging up corpses to bring more warriors back to life. Nobody stops them. Even if we still do our research, this is not our place anymore. We've lost control. I knew they were planning a revolution. I could see it in their eyes, hear it in their voices, but I didn't think it would be this fast. I didn't think it would be this effective. Not all is lost. Last night, Dr. Mulhausen arrived to help. We have a plan involving the techniques of Igaz Moniz to control the unruly. I have my fears that the old man will simply scoff at the move. If he can revive the dead, can we even accomplish something this way? Still, I hold on to the hope we'll be able to reclaim the house. If this goes wrong, the Spaniards will have to intervene. They will take the place I call home and transform it into something different, something hideous. I understand why this must happen, but I will not give up everything because of it. War will not take these lands. Analysis of the pages have led to the discovery of at least 45 distinct genetic profiles, 64% of them containing haplotypes specific to people of the Alinto region. The percentage contrasts heavily with the 8,571 genetic profiles gathered from the remaining SCP-6202 instances, which showed 77% of the profiles are specific to Romani, Bosque, and Lucian Argonian ethnic groups. Only 11% of these profiles have been linked with known victims of Francesco Franco's white terror. Only seven other profiles have been linked with the known disappearances during Portugal's Estado Novo period. The rest remain unidentified. Despite implications, no SCP-6202 instances emits electrical signals, despite the tissues they generate having constantly activated noci receptors. Evidence of sapience remains inconclusive. <laughs>